All right, hello everyone. I'm Michal Sajdak, surprisingly. And today I'll be talking about uh, REST APIs, hacking REST APIs. And actually, uh, who knows REST APIs, how to issue an HTTP request, how about its security? Are you yeah, familiar with this or not? Yes? Uh, like 30%, okay. And can you tell me an HTTP verb which is somehow connected with uh, with a REST API like get and then what? Post, then put, then delete options, patch, yes. Okay, cool. Actually, there are something like 32 different HTTP verbs, but it, within REST APIs, uh, we consider only five or maybe six. All right, uh, I think we can skip this slide about security too, so uh, that's where I work and we do penetration testing. Penetration testing, as you know, it's exactly like normal testing, but a bit more aggressive. And I, I do also uh, trainings. And in the whole company, we do something like 250, maybe 300 pen tests a year and something like 100 trainings a year. All right. Of course, this information is for educational information only, so don't try to hack other people using this technique without a formal agreement. Uh, all right, so let's sta start with, uh, with the first case. Uh, this bug was patched this year in Drupal, and it allowed for remote code execution. So without any authentication, someone was able to execute any code server-side. So download the backdoor, change something on the website, something like this. And the first HTTP uh, request to an API was something like this. So you can see here post HTTP verb and it required authentication. Um, so it's pretty normal. But when we change this post to get, and we provide HTTP body, which is somehow uncommon with get verb, uh, magic happens. Because if Drupal sees that there is get verb, uh, then he thinks, okay, get, so everyone uh, should be able to get data from, from Drupal, so let's keep authentication part. But then it sees, oh, we have HTTP body here, so let's treat it as, uh, as a post request. So now we can issue post requests without any authentication. And someone found this specific HTTP request where you can pass serialized PHP data. And when you can pass serialized, serialized data in any technology, Java, .NET, PHP, uh, basically you can uh, execute any code server side. So no authentication with this little trick. So get an HTTP body and here PHP serialized content, and here's the output for ID command, for example. All right, another case, uh, location smart uh, service in the USA, and normally it allows you to locate uh, your phone or any phone uh, you own, let's say, any phone your company owns. Uh, it's a commercial service, so uh, if you want to try if it really works, you can provide your phone, your number, and then they send you a code. And when you retype this code, uh, then you have your precise location. All right, wh what was the problem here? So uh, the problem was in their API, and actually uh, everyone was able to locate every single phone in the USA. How? We, have, we had two HTTP requests here. And normally, uh, you issue this request, providing the number, and this was forcing the API or asking the API to send this code to your phone or to, to this phone. Then you, uh, then you receive the token, and then you put this token into another HTTP request, and finally, you have your location. But, uh, or Maybe let's go back a bit. But normally you had this status Riku XML. It means that you want responses in XML. So request, response in XML, request, response in XML. And when you change this to JSON, so you want response in JSON, 
then this first request returned you the code. The code was sent to the phone, but also this returned you the code, the token. So if you have the token, you can put it here and have location of any single phone. A bit strange, but it, but it worked. In other case, Italy, and in Italy they have little boxes. They can be installed in, in cars, and if you drive safely, your insurance rate is going low. And if you drive like crazy, then your insurance rates go crazy. And someone analyzed this device and extracted uh, an URL to, to, to the backend, to, to, to their API, and it looked like this. So we have a specific domain here. Uh, it's somehow, let's say, obf obfuscated here. We had component name, like, I don't know, Allianz or ING, something like this. Of course, uh, this is number from, from the last license plate. And in the response, without an authentication, you got another code, sort of a random token, UID, another, let's say, random value, and some random values, first part. The second part, you issued this request. You can put this directly into your browser. So th this domain, the component name, like Allianz, this UUID from the previous response, another code from this previous response, car license, some random data, and you had full access to the admin panel without any authentication. So who owns the car, uh, the precise location, brand of the car, something like this. Authentication bypass or authorization bypass. The only thing you needed was the number from, from the car from the car license plate. All right, so this is pretty new. Uh, it's a bug in a Rosary app. In Polish, it's uh, Inteligentny Różaniec. It's quite a new product and it's a quite new bug from, I don't know, last few days. And actually, when you uh, set up an account, you provide an email and they send you uh, a PIN to this uh, email. So it's something like a password. And you can also resend this PIN by providing the same email once again. And this is pretty normal, but as you can observe here, an attacker can do something like this. Provide your email here, resend PIN. You receive the PIN, it's no problem. But in the response, the attacker sees your PIN. Why? I don't know. So, it, so he sees your password, actually, and can uh, take over your account, stuff like this. It was patched. All right. Uh, one of the biggest uh, breaches in years, so it affected a company called Equifax. Uh, it's a credit bureau, or in Polish, it's something like Bureau Informacji Kreditowej. So it's, uh, the company stores quite sensitive financial data. And actually someone uh, accessed their servers or server and stole 143 millions of records. Uh, I mean, personal data, financial data, stuff like this. And the, the, the main reason for this or the main vulnerability for this was remote code execution in Apache Struts. So it's a library which allows you to build uh, this plugin actually to build REST APIs. And actually the exploit for this was like, was like here. So you were able to pass an XML. This XML was silently deserialized. So out of XML an object was created. And during this deserialization, uh, this command was executed. This command. So any command, download the backdoor, uh, change something, stuff like this. So it's something like silent deserialization. Most developers, most programmers don't know about this stuff. They program an API, but they don't know that the framework automatically deserialize, deserializes data, XMLs or JSONs. And the same thing can happen uh, in JSON. It's a part of presentation from Black Hat USA and .NET technology this time. And actually, you have pretty normal JSON here at first, so make Ford, model Mustang, and so on and so on. But then they add a couple of keys and values. And for example, here you can see calc. So if you issue this JSON to this race API, the calculator starts server-side. 
of course, in, in, uh, in a normal attack, uh, they won't use a calculator, but they download a backdoor or they start PowerShell, something like this. If this endpoint can be reached without authentication, then all this stuff is unauthenticated. By the way, this, this, this similar bug was discovered this year in SharePoint. So uh, this time was an XML. XML passed to the API without any authentication, the deserialization and remote code execution server side. All right, uh, electric scooters. Uh, they are quite popular also in Poland, in Krakow too. And there was a bug in Xiaomi scooter, which allowed for communicating with any scooter around. So this guy is scanning for nearby scooters. Then uh, if he locates the scooter, then he can send to the, to the scooter, to the API, request for stopping, accelerating, without authentication. Authentication was checked only client side, so within the, within the mobile application. If you skip the mobile application and connect directly to the API, then no authentication. Pretty crazy. All right, this is a bit old bug, but really, really interesting. And in 2017, uh, WordPress introduced new API, and they introduced new bugs, new vulnerabilities. And this vulnerability allowed for editing every single page on uh, the target WordPress without any authentication. So it's pretty severe. Uh, how it worked? Normally, if you want to edit this post with ID 1234, you issue, for example, post uh, request to this URL and provide your data to, to edit in JSON or something like this. But you can provide the ID here. So here you have one ID and here you have second ID. Why, why this strange stuff? Uh, so let's see. If we want to edit a uh, post with ID 123, at first we provide this ID 123 ABC then WordPress takes this, precisely, this precise value as an ID. Not this one, but this one. So this has priority number one, this is skipped. And then uh, there is a function which checks if you have permissions to edit this post. And this function returns true because this ID doesn't exist. Okay, so it's, now it's not a problem because I have permission to edit post, a post which doesn't exist. But just before editing, they cast this value into integer just to be 100% sure we are editing the good stuff. So this 1 to 3 ABC transfers or uh, is converted into 1 to 3. The function returned that I have permissions to edit it and this is edited, something like this. There are different bots which uh, try to exploit this vulnerability automatically. All right, a custom stuff or hardware for unlocking locking cars, and someone found in their mobile application hard-coded uh, API admin uh, key. So actually, uh, when I decompile the application, I extract the master key, let's say, to the API, and then I can lock, unlock any car. Just like this. Okay, how to steal uh, all money from the largest bank in India? It's really simple. It's a bash script, one page, and it, it precisely uh, does this thing. So actually, when you do a wire transfer, transfer in your bank, you provide the target account, an account, amount of money, and, uh, and the source account. And the source account should be one of, of course, your accounts. And the bug here was that the source account, uh, as a source account, you could have provided any account in the whole bank and then authorize this operation with your own uh, phone. So any source uh, uh, account, then any amount of money, uh, short uh, message is coming to your phone, then you retype this and the, the wire transfer is going. And there was another uh, bug here, uh, somewhere here, 
uh, which allowed you to list an account for, for a specific user. So for example, let's list accounts uh, for user number one, two, three. Okay, here are their accounts, no authentication or, or no authorization. And then let's do transfer from this account and this is the, the second part. All right. Uh, API key leaks. So here is one case. And someone is uh, uh, saying that, okay, I was trading uh, cryptocurrency and someone stole 100 bucks from my account. What happened? So someone uh, answers him, okay, uh, we found the issue. You committed your API key to your public GitHub repository. So someone stole this key and just withdraw all your money. Uh, so the guy, the affected guy said, okay, I'm fixing this, let's see. Let's see this code. And actually now he's passing API key from the command line. But here is a little thing which is called which is called history. All right. So let's see here. And as you can see in history, we have full normal values. So the question now is if he invalidated the previous keys or not. I don't know. All right. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, he also says one important thing. Oh, why, 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 why? Why this told me uh, my money? I had two factor authentication. So how it's possible? And the people there uh, answer him, all right, but as you know, APIs most of the time just ignore two factor authentication because with every single API request, you don't want to retype the code. It's a nuisance, right? So uh, this is thing to, to, to remember if you're using APIs. Uh, most of the time you don't have two-factor authentication. So attackers will be targeting uh, APIs, not standard, let's say, authentication process, but APIs. All right, very simple case in Panna Bread uh, company or, or let's say food chain in the USA. And they have this very simple API, and the first problematic request was here. So using an ID, someone was able to get basic user data. And using a phone from, from the data, someone was able to get full data. So email, part of credit card number, stuff like this. And at first they patched this stuff, or Mm, yes, this fix this stuff, or they tried to fix this stuff by allowing to issue this request and this request only for authenticated people. But we forgot that they have an option to register a free account. So again, <laughs> the same bug. And in the second run, they were able to fix this properly, probably. All right. Uh, Big security conference, RSA conference, and what they had. Uh, someone downloaded their app, used for registration, decompiled this application, found interesting URLs, and those URLs were used to enumerate all the users. For example, user with ID this, name is like this, name, surname, email, all the, all the things. No authentication at all biggest, or almost biggest, security conference. And this is also quite nice vulnerability. Uh, in 2012, it was used to hack GitHub, and the bug there was uh, something like this. You were able to write to every single repository, write stuff to private repository, public repository, no matter. And actually, the, the guy published this on his blog, and he then emailed GitHub, ha ha ha, you have a bug here. So they banned him, they had problems and stuff like this, but they quick fixed this very, very quickly. Okay, how it works. 
Here's a, a, a bit newer example of this vulnerability in this, uh, in this Harbor product. And as you can see here, here is a class describing, uh, describing a user. So we have user ID, username, email, password, blah, 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 uh, has admin role, stuff like this. And normally, when you create an account, it looks like this. So post to API users, username, email, stuff like this. But then you can add another parameters here, any parameters out of this list. And uh, the programmers here think, oh, it, it will be quite nice, quite fast to just copy all the stuff to this uh, user object and let's do this. So if you provide this has admin role equal to true, you can register uh, your account with admin role. As simple as that. <laughs> but the problematic thing is that you must, that you should know how to name this stuff. They had access to source code somehow, so this was pretty, pretty easy. Okay, and a couple of uh, words about hacking JSON Web Token. Uh, do you know this technology? Yes or no? Yeah, it's it's really popular within APIs. So the definition is quite simple. Uh, JSON Web Tokens or JOTs are used to transfer data from one point to, to another point using JSON object. And within APIs it is used, uh, for example, in this scenario. So we have a mobile application, you authenticate somewhere with your mobile application, then the server sends you this token with, for example, your ID, your groups, your specific data. Okay, you receive this token and then you communicate with different APIs. And if you have access, of, if you have permissions to access a specific object, then this API returns you the specific data. And if you don't have access, for example, uh, you need, I don't know, a super admin uh, group, they give you permission denied or something like this. So it's very important to, uh, for all the APIs to make sure that the attacker, uh, a user, uh, doesn't modify this token. Because if he's able to modify this token, then he can set this group to super admins, ID equal to one, something like this. And for this, we use something which is called JWT signature. So let's move to technical details. Here is an example of, uh, of this token, JSON Web Token. And we have three parts here. So the payload, so the data we are transferring. The very simple header, uh, most of the time in this type, uh, here is JWT. Here is the algorithm for signature. So it's the whole header, the whole payload, and the signature, and the signature is created out of this red stuff, so header, dot, glued with payload, so all, all the stuff, glued with secret key, which is stored only server side, and to all the stuff, uh, a function hmac sha256 is applied. You can think about this HMAC as a normal SHA256, for example. It's a bit simplified uh, view of this stuff, but it's enough to understand all, all the stuff. So if we intercept this, uh, this uh, token and we modify, for example, this login to super admin, we must somehow modify the signature. How can we do this? Of course, we can change this stuff. Uh, we can change this stuff and how to calculate the signature. We need header, we have header. We need payload, we have payload, but we don't have the secret key. So we just can't recalculate this signature. And a whole bunch of attacks uh, targeting JSON Web Tokens uh, are breaking the signature. So let's, let's see how it works. The first thing, or first approach, is that we can uh, just brute force the key. So if you set two simple key, like seven letters, eight letters, nine letters, we can use a tool which is called uh, Hashcat. It is used for, as you can see, password recovery. So if you forget your password to your JSON Web Token, you can also always recover this. 
using this tool. Uh, it uses uh, graphic cards, GPUs to increase speed of this cracking or recovery, maybe we should say. And they, of course, have support for JSON Web Tokens. So basically, you intercept any single token, feed this token into Hashcat, and if the password is weak enough, after some time, you have this password cracked. And on this card, it's somehow, it's not the fastest card in the world, and it's not the weakest. Uh, the speed of this cracking is something like 200 million tries per second. So it's quite big. First approach. Second approach. In the specification, I mean JSON Web Token specification, you, uh, you have only two algorithms which must be implemented by libraries. The first algorithm is this S, uh, uh, HS256, this HMAC SH256, and the second, a bit curious algorithm, is none. None means do nothing, actually. So how to use this stuff to talk token? Let's go back here. We intercept this token, we change this stuff in payload, for example, super admin or something like this, we change this stuff in header, so change this algorithm, signature algorithm in na to, into none. We can skip signature and we send this change token to the server. And if the server is vulnerable, then, uh, then it extracts header and it see, okay, we have algor signature algorithm set to none, so we can skip the signature or skip checking the signature. And it passes the token as verified. So we can put we can put actually everything here in the payload. It's pretty crazy. All right, uh, let's see this stuff. I have a little movie. Unfortunately, it's in uh, it's in Polish, uh, but it's quite short. So it's a little intro to this next bug concerning JSON Web Token. So let's see. Oh, let's hear. I'll put it to full screen. Ktoś pukał? Tak, to ja. Dzień dobry pani. Słucham pana. Jestem przyjacielem Ryszarda. Dzień dobry, proszę bardzo. Chwileczkę, jak, jakiego Ryszarda? Ochuckiego, pani siostrzeńca. Aha, proszę, hasło pan zna? Jakie hasło? Żyrafy wchodzą do szafy? Oczywiście, że znam. M musi pan je powiedzieć. Naturalnie, żyrafy wchodzą do szafy. Pawiany wchodzą na ściany. Proszę bardzo, pana, proszę. Okay, that's it. So now see how it's connected to JSON Web Tokens. All right. Uh, here's the bag. No. No, 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 no. Not again. Ktoś pukał? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Here's the back. So you intercept any token, then you modify the payload. You don't know the password. You don't know how to recalculate the signature, but you send this modified token anyway. And the server says you, oh no, invalid signature, because I expected this and I got this. Okay, now, so let's set another token and let's put this signature to my modified token. That is okay. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Uh, okay, we are coming to, to, to an end of my presentation, but I have a couple of interesting resources for you. Interesting for testing uh, REST APIs, I mean security of course only, and maybe building secure APIs. And a very basic, let's say, checklist is available here. On the last page of my presentation, you will have link to my presentation, so you can just grab this and click uh, right away here. And API security checklist. This checklist is divided into different areas, like authentication, check this, 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 this. JSON web tokens, check this, this, this. OAuth, check this, this, this. Input validation, stuff like this. Really nice checklist. And another document is really, really fresh. 
I think that this year, maybe this month, they will be releasing final version. It's called uh, OWASP API uh, Top 10 Concerning REST APIs. So the most uh, critical and common problems within APIs. You, have, uh, you can see here categories. You can, of course, download PDF version of, uh, of this document and also use this as your checklist, how to security test your APIs using different, let's say, attacks. All right, and another the last document from OWASP. It's quite similar to this uh, REST API security top 10, but it's more like a little, I don't know, book or something like this. So something about JSON Web Token, something about authentication, and so on and so on, also from this OWASP organization. All right, so maybe questions, but before questions, if you want to download this presentation, it's available on this link, uh, so without any further authentication. And uh, a little advertisement, uh, we are publishing a Securac Web Application Security book, so it's something like 800 pages, with also REST API uh, part within this book. And with this code, you can have uh, a little rebate for the price. All right, any questions? As ever, you're encouraged to use the slido.com and um, the test over application. So that's five votes, and the question from, from Piotr is, does the law have any punishment for those creating problems unintentionally? For example, should a tester be afraid if something bad happens because of his or her lack of awareness and knowledge? Yes, uh, a very good question. If you have a formal agreement for penetration testing or security testing, you are, let's say, safe. But still, in the agreement, you will have uh, the scope. So things you can do and the things you mustn't do. But if you are doing just you know, happy pen testing on the internet, uh, then uh, there is something in Polish law which says if you find a vulnerability and you send this information uh, to the owner without any delay, and you uh, and you haven't done any harm, then you can be uh, then you you won't have any consequences. So you must send this information promptly without any delay, and you you are not allowed to do any harm. But just uh, accidentally, you can I don't know destroy all the database, and it will be too late. <laughs> So my advice is don't, uh, don't try to pen test uh, or security test live sites or, uh, or infrastructure without permissions. You can try if you want to you know, uh, have practical knowledge or gain practical knowledge. You can try, uh, you can try something like this, hacker one. So actually, it's something like a directory for public bug bounty programs. So companies agree that you're allowed to hack them within the, the precise scope, and if you send them information about the bugs, they pay you money. So here you can see. Uh, could, could we switch to the ah, right. to Michal's screen just for a moment, please? No, we can't. No, no not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Can you repeat the address then? Yeah, the address the is HackerOne, HackerOne.com. Mm -hmm. So they have, I don't know, hundreds of different uh, bug bounty programs. So you can, without signing an agreement, just start to hack the, the company listed on this on this hacker one. Okay, another question? Yes, for, for beginners, could you recommend some test sites or real test sites with vulnerabilities to REST API testing, but in a legal way, of course. Um, <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> uh, 
this knowledge about, about REST API security is very, let's say, low or very scarce, or there are not too many resources, no books, nothing at all uh, about REST API security. This OWASP organi organization has just released this, uh, let's say, beta version of OWASP Top 10, but no applications, no stuff like this. Uh, so I know commercial stuff, but not, let's say, free stuff you can you can use to test or to gain your knowledge. Okay, thank Sorry. you. Let's have one more, please. And this one is from Piotr. Could a hash cat be used to crack user password on Linux? Okay. Uh, if you ask if Hashcat runs on Linux, then the answer is yes. If you ask if you can crack a password for accessing Linux, the answer is also yes. But you must have this hashed version of, of the password. And it's Hashcat, oh, we don't have uh, my screen. This Hashcat supports more than, I don't know, 100 different, different algorithms. Also salted algorithms, complicated algorithms. Cracking VeroCrypt, cracking TrueCrypt, and so on and so on. Hacking successfully, but always legally, was Michał Sajdak. Thank you.